Now we'll take a look at the content section of the notebook. There's a couple of things that we can do with the content section. Remember the content section is where teachers can publish and write to the section and students can just view the section or grab content from it but they can't contribute to it. So I've got an example here of a worksheet that I've created. It's um, based on Year 10 Science. There's forces in motion going on here. So we've got uh, a worksheet that's going to be homework for the students or perhaps a, a sheet they can do within class. So we've got um, some exercises there, just the basic concepts too of what to do. Um, and then some calculations that they've got to come up with to figure out the resultant force of the vehicle or the person traveling in a certain direction. So we've got that in our content section or content library of the notebook. And we can see that here too with, with OneNote. So I've used the inking abilities to drop in the arrows and of course write in the values for the different vehicles. Let's have a look at what that looks like for Jack as a student and see what he can do to bring that into his own notebook. So we have Jack's view of the notebook. He's now going to visit the content library. And you can see the worksheet that is available in the teacher's content section. He can't add anything to that. I'm trying to type there and that's not working. But what he can do, because he's going to create his own answers on this sheet for homework, is he's going to copy it. Right click, and copy. Go on over to his handouts section of his own notebook. And we'll paste it in here. So now we've got a worksheet that Jack can take from the content section and um, complete his homework. So let's have a look at what Jack can do. We've got 2,500 minus that. So we've got driving forces, 8,000 minus 2,500. It's 5,500. So that's the resultant force. Now Jack's submitting that as homework. And we'll go back and see what that looks like for the, for the teacher. Back in Mr. Webster's notebook, he's still looking at the content library. So we'll go back up one level and we'll have a look into Jack's homework. And we'll just give it a moment for it to synchronize. You can see it synchronizing there. We should see the, the copy of the page soon appear in the notebook. And we can go down and check his answers. So we have Jack's notebook up here. Um, it's bold, so we can see that that hasn't been read, and it's a nice indication for teachers to see what has been worked on. So we'll go straight to there. We can see that Jack's taken a copy of that, and we'll go down to see what he's filled out. And we can see that Jack has filled out some answers. We can see there too that that's where he's been editing. <laughs> and quite handy, we can see when it was done. So. Um, if it was done just before class, then, well, okay, he's got it in by the deadline, but um, we can see when he worked on it. And it's synchronized, and as a teacher, I can see his homework and other students as well as it synchronizes into my view of the notebook. One other thing I can do, of course, as a teacher, if I want to use the collaborative section, oh, sorry, the content section, uh, I may want to use it as a, a whiteboard during the during class so I might um, you know begin to do that lesson on forces and resultant force and I can take them through this um, all the concepts to do with resultant forces of that class and I'm presenting this up on a data projector so that it's visible to students and they can take a copy of that and, and get the understanding and um, and check back on the notes. I'm not restricted to just that one section too. I might create a section for forces and motion. And then drag those sections over so that it's nice and tidy. And we'll put the um, whiteboard lesson in there too. And get rid of that. 